In this video, we describe transition state theory from a thermodynamics uh, formulation. Right, so transition state theory is one of the most su successful techniques to calculate rate constants without ever having to do an experiment. The gist of the theory is that you can write a reaction uh, in which two reagents A and B come together uh, to generate products as having this reaction scheme in which uh, this intermediate would be a transition state. Now the transition state is, is not a stable intermediate, instead it's simply the point of maximum energy along the minimum energy reaction path connecting uh, reagents and products. Now in a prior video we have seen uh, how the theory essentially tells you that the rate constant for that reaction can be simply calculated as this. Okay, well that's Boltzmann constant, that's flux constant, that is the temperature, and then we have that this will be the equilibrium constant uh, that characterizes the equilibrium between reagents and the transition state. In this video, we actually take this concept a little forward, uh, and then uh, we're going to try to see how we can use uh, thermodynamic arguments to learn more about that equilibrium constant, and in the end, be able to explain things like the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy uh, that are part of the Arrhenius uh, theory. Okay, in terms of uh, uh, changes like uh, things like the enthalpy of activation, uh, the Gibbs energy of activation, and the entropy of activation. All right, so uh, from thermodynamics, we know that uh, equilibrium constants are related to the uh, standard Gibbs energy. Okay, so we know that this expression is one of the most important ones in all of thermodynamics. Okay, that's the relationship between uh, the equilibrium constant of a process and the Gibbs energy of uh, the standard state. The only modification that we're actually uh, taking here in this expression is that now this will be the Gibbs energy of activation, and that is the uh, equilibrium constant that uh, is responsible for the equilibrium between reagents and the transition state. So the Gibbs energy of activation will be the difference in Gibbs energy between the transition state and reagents. That will be delta G of activation under standard conditions. Okay. Right, so from here, we can actually take and solve for the equilibrium constant, which is simply going to be e to the minus delta Rg naught of activation over Rt. Right? And with this value of the equilibrium constant, then we can come here and then uh, find a new expression. All right, so that now is going to be, using thermodynamic arguments, is going to be equal to e to the minus Gibbs energy of activation at the standard state over RT. Great, so that's the first uh, concept of thermodynamics that we include in our uh, transition state theory. The second one is to recognize that the Gibbs energy uh, is actually, can be rewritten also as a function of the enthalpy of activation, the standard state, and the entropy of activation of the standard state. Okay? where this thing will be the change in enthalpy as you go from reagents to the transition state. Again, that is what we call the enthalpy of activation. And there will be the change in entropy as you go from reagents to the transition state. Okay, so those are simple uh, enough concepts. Right, so we can take this expression now and then replace, uh, uh, replace it up here. And then we get that this is KBT over H. And then this will be E to the minus delta RH of activation minus T delta RS of activation over RT. Okay. All right, so our folding that all forward, we're going to have two terms here. E to the minus delta RH over RT, and then E plus these T's will cancel, and it will be delta S over R. Okay, so we can rewrite this as KV T over H, and then I'm going to write the entropy term first, which will be E to the delta S of activation over R, and then there's um, the term that depends on the enthalpy of activation minus delta RH of activation over RT. Okay, so this is now how we calculate our uh, a rate constant with transition state theory. Now, uh, we can take a, a little uh, pause here and then try to compare this to the Arrhenius expression. Okay, notice that the Arrhenius expression would be K 
is equal to a e to the minus e a over r t. Okay, when we compare these two expressions, uh, they actually look very similar. Notice that uh, in the Arrhenius theory, you have an expression that depends on an energy divided over RT. And here you have uh, an exponential of an enthalpy divided over RT. Okay, so this, uh, in principle, uh, gives you a relationship between delta H and uh, the activation energy. And then the rest would be equal to the pre exponential factor. Okay, so it turns out that uh, the activation energy and the enthalpy are actually not exactly the same thing. We know that uh, internal energy and enthalpy are almost the same, but slightly different. As a matter of fact, the true relationship between activation energy and uh, the enthalpy of activation is this delta RH of activation plus MRT, okay, where this is simply the molecularity of the reaction. Okay, so if this reaction is unimolecular, it only has one reagent, then this would be one. If this, rea if this reaction is bimolecular, like in this case, then this M would be two. Okay, so this is a very important expression because allo it allows you to connect a parameter in the Arrhenius expression with something that comes from a transition state theory. And it actually, again, al allows you to explain exactly what this activation energy is. Well, the activation energy is simply the enthalpy in the change in enthalpy going from the reaction from the reaction to the transition state, plus a small correction. This is usually going to be very, very small at room temperature. Okay, that depends on the temperature. Okay, so again, this is the first uh, the first very clear explanation of what the dot uh, parameter the uh, uh, Reynolds expression the activation energy is. Okay, now the last thing that we can do then is uh, uh, incorporate this value of the activation energy into that expression so that we can then find uh, uh, what the pre-exponential factor is. All right, so let's see if we can do that uh, slowly here. Right, so again, what I'm going to do now is uh, take this delta RH right here and then solve this expression for it. Delta RH of activation is equal to the activation energy minus MRT. And then uh, this will allow me to plug in the activation energy into this expression and then uh, uh, we will be able to establish very clearly what this pre-exponential factor is. All right, so let's see how we do that. This uh, rate constant is going to be equal to KBT over H E of delta S of activation standard over R. And then we will have E to the minus delta H over RT. But then that's going to be all of this minus the activation energy minus MRT um, over RT. Okay, and much as before here, we're going to have two terms. Notice that this is going to unfold into the exponential of minus EA over RT, multiplied by the exponential of plus MRT over RT, which is simply going to be E to the M. Right, so uh, our final expression is going to be like this. Okay, so be T over H e to the delta S of activation over R. And then we find that again here you'll have to turn E to the minus E A over R T and E to the M. I'm going to write here E to the M first. And then the other term is this. Okay. And now this expression, uh, which is a hybrid expression between Arrhenius and transition state theory, Okay, can be compared directly with, uh, with the Arrhenius expression so that we can actually see uh, what the pre-exponential factor actually is. Right? We'll write below here uh, the Arrhenius expression. Notice that now, because we've been able to incorporate this activation energy, we have this term here that is identical to the term there. And what that means is that the pre-exponential factor it actually has to do is actually this value right here. Okay, so this is the first time that we actually get a glimpse from what that pre-exponential factor really means. And the interesting aspect of this is that this pre-exponential factor, well, the first thing that happens is that it depends on temperature. And this is something that is not very obvious from uh, the Arrhenius expression, where uh, uh, at least when the temperature change is not very large, we have assumed that this thing does not depend on temperature. But we see that, in, uh, uh, that when you actually look, uh, uh, take a, a detailed look at it, it does depend on temperature, as you have it right here. 
The second thing that is important about this pre-exponential factor is it actually it depends on the uh, entropy of activation. And again, the entropy of activation is simply the change in entropy as you move from the reins to the transition state. For example, in this particular case where you have a biomolecular reaction, you will be able to see that this uh, change in entropy should have a negative value because you're going from two species, the two reagents A and B, which can uh, have some entropy, to just one species in which those two uh, converge in a space and bonds start to break and form, but you only have one species which is uh, intrinsically more ordered. Right, so you're uh, losing this order as you go from the re to the transition state. In this biomolecular reaction, what that would mean is that this uh, uh, value here is negative. And again, that dictates what the pre-exponential factor is. All right, so in summary, what we've done in this video is to take a thermodynamic view at how transition state theory, and the useful thing of this is that now we actually have very tangible uh, properties that inform to us what the activation energy is this is a value that appears in the Arrhenius theory, and then what the pre-exponential factor is, which is also part of the Arrhenius theory. Okay, so again, with uh, thermodynamic arguments, we're able to explain what each one of those two parameters are, and in the homework problems, you will actually uh, get an opportunity to actually crunch some numbers and see uh, what those values really mean.